Hi, this is Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. Joining us on this episode is our every now and then guest, Brian Trent. It's great to be here. Thanks, guys. So, Brian, you're joining us for a discussion of our uh, favorite monsters. Uh, and in the process of trying to list our favorite monsters, we ended up making a list of iconic monster categories. So these are different types of monsters. We, we tried to come up with enough categories to capture every kind of monster that we could think of. We literally did this. We, let, we said, <laughs> what category would this guy fit in? How about this guy? So we ended up actually having to create a miscellaneous because there's, had to do there's some monsters that are so out of it. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, one. but it's, it's, it's good. Yeah, so, so we've got like, what, 70 categories? How many? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I've seen lists that have you know, categories and subcategories and subcategories. Yeah, you could we, drill we, down. We, There's the lumper splitter thing, right? Yeah, you could, you yeah. could, yeah. You could, for any kind of list making like this, you could always lump things into the fewest number of categories or split things out into the greatest number of categories. Yeah, we thought we thought we hit a reasonable compromise. Well, we came there. up with what thirteen? No, it was more 16. like sixteen. Oh, we're at sixteen, 16, 16 now. You, when you left the room, we came up with a couple more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, so let's begin. So the first category of monster is bestial. Mm -hmm. So these are monsters that are basically just like sharks, bears, but they could be other things as well, werewolves, mm -hmm. right? It's basically a feral, animalistic powerful predatory animal beast. with sharp teeth right yeah sharp teeth sharp claws pretty, pretty much standard yeah. for them and so the, yeah and in fact it's interesting because psychologically the reason why we're fascinated with monsters is because of this innate fear of predators right, right? Yeah. We're, we're survival in, and, fighting the megafauna creatures in the yeah. prehistoric yeah days. uh and, or just yeah saber-toothed tigers or whatever yeah we were we were prey we were more prey than yeah. predator you know, for most of our existence. Yeah, if you weren't obsessed with them, you died and didn't pass on your genes. <laughs> right, right. Well, there's you a reason people genes. were afraid of the woods right. in the past. Yeah, yes. so we are descended from people who are afraid of wolves. And so we're obsessed with this. So, so bestial, I think, is the, the original, the root category of monster. Mm -hmm. And then, but humans mm -hmm. are inventive and we've come up with a whole bunch of different other variations on the beast Right. Theme. Right. 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 So another one which we, we debated amongst ourselves whether this should be a category is human. Right. And I absolutely think that oh, it should be. Sure. I agree. For sure. And and Brian, I think you asked what's the what makes a human a monster? And I think it is basically being a psychopath. Yeah, and, and most of human history is certainly peppered with examples yeah. of that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and again, talking about our history, if you weren't killed by a wolf, you were probably killed. If you were killed, uh, by a person. Died, you were probably killed by another. Yeah, in fact, more likely. Yeah, probably more. <laughs> yeah, likely. I mean, it's, it's one of the. It's you know, man versus man, man versus nature. You know, yeah, yeah man yeah. versus man, man. People are the worst monsters in. In the right. real I mean, world, <laughs> ranging from everything from you know rival tribes across the river to you know Mongolian invasions and crusaders and I mean mm. just and right up to the 20th century and beyond. Yeah. So so before me, we before we click away from bestial though. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because okay, yeah, we, we, got, we got to give a couple of examples. Grendel. Ah. Right. Exactly. Ooh. That's a great one. Jaws yeah. to me. Is, Jaws is big. It, it hit me. Well, wait. Jaws, though, first off, it's one of the best monster movies of all time. Yeah, absolutely. The first it, summer blockbuster movie ever made. It yeah. still remarkably holds up as oh, yeah. if it hasn't yes. lost a stitch to this very Incredible. moment. Even, even Incredible. Still the, making wonders. It is. Even, even the, the special effect of the shark, which was mechanical. It, and how it, many movies can lay claim to doing some changing behavior of people so dramatically? How many people were afraid to go into the ocean after seeing Jaws in the mid seventies? It permanently it changed was my. Huge. It permanently changed my thoughts of my body going oh my into God. water. It permanently changed the culture. We still have Shark Week on TV because of Jaws. Yes, yes. there you go. Yeah, there you go. yeah that's crazy. Kept, popular. That, that has kept Animal Planet alive for a yeah. long time. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it also makes me feel bad for sharks, though, because the yes. vast majority of sharks are. Nice. Getting They're back not going to eat you. They're not man eaters. Yeah. yeah, if we were on, a, if we were, if we were the sad. natural item on a shark menu, no beach in the world, no, no ocean in the world would be safe. Right. right. Yeah. Right. So, but we're the from their perspective, we're the monsters killing them by the millions. <laughs> That's right. So. Right. We are the monsters. All right, but and clicking back werewolves. to werewolves. Yeah, werewolves are, are bestial. Yeah. Werewolves were yeah. bestial as well. Yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. another big one. 
I mean, but, but now going back to humans, okay. so we have like the psychopathic serial killer, right? Mm-hmm. That's your basic, you know, human like Hannibal. Monster. Like Hannibal. Hannibal. He's yeah. one of my, come on, yeah. he's one of my humans, favorites. Humans can be menacing because they're intelligent, mm-hmm. right? Oh, yeah. And, and, they're, they're, and they can fit in, you know, they can, they can, they can fit in, they can disguise. hide in the crowd. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah hunting, absolutely. yeah, the, the, the wolf hunting, uh, you know, among the sheep kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. But in this category, we have other people like we have Mike Myers. Jason yeah, we have Voorhees, Jason, yes. yeah. Freddy. So there's a horror they're movie human. genre, yeah. human yeah. monsters. Yeah, yeah. Jack fully, the Ripper. Not fully yeah, Jack human, the Ripper. But yeah, mostly they're mostly yeah. human. They've got yeah. some be modified, modified or... qualities, but yeah. still basically like, in that category. Freddy had some magical effects, like he was able. Oh, certainly, to, he was a supernatural. Yeah, he was supernatural. He was probably more so. Uh, than but he than used to be just others. a human. He was. He started off. He as started off as actually. He started off as a monstrous human. Yeah. The reason that he was burned alive and all that because he was basically right. You know, molesting you know, children. And uh, Jason Voorhees, uh, he's magical as well, but ultimately is a humanoid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Leatherface is... is <laughs> Leatherface is, yeah, just like a... a freakazoid. You know, he's just like, yeah. like just wearing... Out in know, the wilderness, wearing a... You human know. faces and... Yeah. There, All right. There are so many examples, though, that cut across multiple categories. Yeah. And we, we debated... So, okay, if you have like stormtroopers, right? Or mm-hmm. Nazis or whatever, you have the faceless drone... Uh, stormtrooper t- iconic type. They're humans, so yeah. they fit in the human category. But we also have a swarm category, and they also kind of fit into that category too, because they're really right. most menacing in large numbers, mm-hmm. which is what I think is the the key bit about a swarm. They're not necessarily completely benign individually, but you're not going to have a movie about one stormtrooper and how menacing they are to society. But you have a thousand stormtroopers, and that's the monster right. that you know that you're fighting against. Or one nanite. I mean, if you put nanites into a this one yes. category, and a, a very deadly foe. Uh, yeah. When they show an effective, realistic swarm, uh, e- you know, evil protagonist, they are. St- they are super deadly. Yeah. They are so are hard. Really you hard. can't shoot them and be like, oh, you're dead. You need a million guns to do that. Right. It's a, it, to me, it's something that's very, very scary in that in that sense because it's so hard to get rid of. When it comes to swarms, too, this is, uh, I'll come up with a couple asymmetrical examples. Do you guys remember The X-Files? There was an episode called Darkness Falls, one of my favorite episodes that didn't deal with aliens. These um, little bioluminescent mites have been released from these centuries-old trees. And they would swarm, and they would actually cocoon people. Mm-hmm. Um, and what are you going to? And they and they would swarm at night. Daylight would keep them kind of uh, dormant. And, and it's terrifying when you're running through the woods trying to yeah. out basically outrun the darkness because these things are going to come for you. Um, that reminds me also of the library, Doctor Who. Oh, you have, yeah. I think it was the Vasha Narada or something like that, where they they. Um, if they got they they live in the shadows and they could they won't get into the light. But if you've any little bit of you is in shadow, they can get they can get, get onto you. Yeah. And once they're onto you, you can't that it's done. You're yeah. dead. And they basically just skeletonize you in a second. And you're dead. And if anybody in the chat remembers the movie from the seventies called uh, Phase Four about mm-hmm. a swarm of hyper intelligent ants. Mm. That was uh yeah that um, marked mm. me for life. Another ch- another cheesy swarm uh, is Piranha. Remember those Piranha. bad Piranha oh, movies? Yeah. yeah. James Cameron worked on um, yeah worked on that. Yeah. Really but that you know, but there is something primal so to speak. and horrifying yeah. about that as well. Right. Right? Yeah. Right. It, yeah, it, yeah. it checks a lot of boxes because there's a uh, there are multi mouthed monsters in the water. You know yeah. what I mean? That's that gets triply scary. And Piranha aren't anything like you see in the, in the right. movies. That's by fiction, the way. But by yeah. the way. The birds, you know, the birds. Are individually yeah. benign as a swarm could be menacing. Uh, star- stormship, starship troopers, starship troopers. Yeah, so have bugs. swarms of bug-like creatures. Yeah. They just call them bugs. Uh, you know, again, one yeah, you could shoot, kill it with a gun, but swarm, uh, swarm of rabbits in Night of the Lepus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. What's next? Uh, building off of the human category, there are superhumans, mm-hmm. right? Humans that are so they. What's menacing about them is that they have some kind of superpower. So these could be, um, you know, evil or dark mutants, for example, like Magneto sort of is a, uh, a super villain, super villain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. Um, or, or, um, Thanos in the Marvel universe yep. is, is a monster type character, uh, because he is a super strength and fortitude and ability, but he's still humanoid and you guys, he's still yeah, yeah. basically a, Human, yeah, humanoid type person. But that with the Infinity Gauntlet, I mean, that's yeah. I mean, he's the, the yeah, apex. a monster who can threaten the entire universe, oh right? So, mm-hmm. um, all right. Now, next category is 
aliens. Mm-hmm. Um, big category. So, yeah, the big category. This can contain a lot of things like the alien, the xenomorph. I think the archetype of, of you know, a predatory alien that is menacing uh, to us. Wonderful um, example. I mean, uh, but also in, in related is predators is predator. one of my favorites. Such a great, um, what, 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 what were they called? Antioch or something is the name of the mm-hmm. species. So, so they're great. And if you guys haven't seen Prey, the latest iteration of predators, mm-hmm. dude, watch it. Go okay. right well, now. Right now. We'll wait. And we'll right, I'll be back. That's on my so list. Good. But even so the Martians from Mars Attacks, or, or act, from act, act. or or War of the Worlds. War of yeah. the Worlds. I was yeah. just going to say they were they were definitely the monster of the, of those movies. And, and, and but the cool effective. thing about that monster yeah. is it was a monster that was in a monster ship. Yeah, which I thought it, it's such a cool idea. Yeah, yeah, it's a monster the inside oh, yeah. a monster. Yeah. 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 But actually, and, and when H.G. Wells wrote War of the Worlds, that was one of the things they would uh, his tripods. They would they were hunting us the way like we would you know go on uh, you know jackal coursing or a fox hunt or something. Yeah. That was it was very deliberate. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they would they would pick up the humans and then like turn them into red goo and drink them. Yeah, they thought so little of us, which is one of the freaky yeah. things about an alien entity. So little of us that we we're basically fertilizer. Yeah, we're like right. a juice box. Yeah, to them. Juice box. <laughs> and still and still so watchable. This isn't you know I love science fiction. Not I'm not a huge fan of 1950s science fiction um, per se, but that is one of the examples of a ni- 1950s science fiction that you, I. You could watch as aged incredibly well. Yep. That and um, what's the what's the other one? Forbidden Planet. Forbidden Planet. Those yeah. two, yeah. My number Planet. one favorite. Those two amazing movies. Yeah. Um, All right, another category: kaiju. Kaiju. Godzilla. Basically, Godzilla. really Kai. big monsters like Godzilla. Yeah. Godzilla's, Godzilla. The Godzilla's, Cloverfield monster. The Cloverfield monster. Although we debated about whether or not that was more of a Cthulhu-like monster, yeah, it's which in both is categories. another category. It's in are, both. We're talking about these two categories together. Basically, huge monsters. You know, building size like skyscraper size, Mothra, Rodan, yeah, the whole yeah. crew, just so, uh, the, so the Pacific Rim, right? the King ki- Kong. basically the kaiju from Pacific Rim yeah. fall into that category. Yeah, they, Mothra. they are the category. Um, and but if they get a, they get too psychologically menacing, they fall more into yeah. the Lovecraftian mm-hmm. uh, Cthulhu end of the spectrum. And a lot of the monsters from the 1950s, the bug, the radioactive yeah. bug craze. You had tarantula, the deadly mantis. Thirty foot woman. Yeah. Thir- is that a superhuman, right. a human, or a kaiju? Uh, I think we. I, th- wow. I think that that's a trifecta. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> Did we get a category for the for like the radioactive, you know, radioactive uh, induced big? But they're thing? still kaiju in a way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when when I would um, say they're kind of when kaiju. them came out, that creature was a gigantic ant, which another great movie from the 1960s. Mm-hmm. Very. Uh, it's on my list. Criminally underrated. Then. Uh, very intelligent script. Does it hold up? Does it hold it, up? It holds up. It's been like 15, the, the, the script years. is so well written. It, it's there's no excuse that a movie about giant ants should be that well written. So um, <laughs> right, but that was the kaiju for the time, right? For, right. In America, I anyway. would put that in the kaiju group. Okay, big well. category coming up: zombies. <laughs> yeah, they definitely need to be in their own yeah. category. Yeah, they do. Yes, they're it's kind of swarm, kind of swarm, kind of. Yes, they're infected humans. Humanish. They're infected. So there's they need they, their own. They category. overlap different categories but they do need their own category they're all over the place they're slow they're fast they're fungal they're more like um, they're alive some of them they're are like kind of alive they're magical or not magical like ray, yeah. Like, yeah yeah they could be supernatural necromancy or yeah or whatever so there's all kinds of different ways to become a zombie but it's basically a, a former human who now is you know zombie like in behavior they just zombified they're, they're, yeah they've been say. zombified they they're they they could be slow or fast. But they, they usually are slow, but they're they're just they're inexorable. They're Murderous. all they want to do is eat, kill you and eat your brains or eat you. And they don't or, stop. Right? And what they, a just, commentary. they just don't stop. They what, just don't stop. What a commentary! It loops back to the human category. Human is monsters, yeah. right? Yeah. You know whatever it is, some enemy forces pouring over, raping and pillaging and burning and I mean it's mm-hmm. you know yeah. that's a, a mirror of, uh, of of humanity's uh, less than shining moments. Yes. How about, how about if you had to pick a zombie, if you even can think of it, a singular zombie. I have my favorite. I do. I mean, I mean, you yours and I are probably the same. I, yeah. I, I love the slow, semi-rotting, you know, walking, flesh-eating zombies. Yeah. Shambling. Yeah. Yeah. That's shambling zombies. Because, because it really is about the numbers at that point. One of them, and almost anybody can get away from one zombie. Mm-hmm. It's the numbers. It's like, it's like the, it's trying to fight back the waves. There's a you're overwhelmed with the numbers. But if I had to say, like, what would scare me the most? And, so I, and that's one of my go-to criterion for what's a good monster. How much does it really freak me out? I think okay. that supernatural necromantic zombies you know, are the scariest because 
you, it really does open up the possibilities of what they could do mm-hmm. and how frightening they could be. Like, like they what? have those glowing red eyes and they're harder to kill and they can have magical powers and they can have real super strength. Like a, like a lich? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They could be smart. They don't have to be mindless. Um, so it's it just so much more you could do with them. Uh, you know, for the biological zombies, we're trying to sort of replicate the necromantic zombies mm-hmm. with biology and you could sort of do it, but you can't get fully there. Yeah. I think, yeah, there's a potential for terror and horror. I think is wow. greatest with that type. Well, one of the, actually in the, one of the oldest stories known to hu- humanity, um, going back to the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of Ishtar, goddess Ishtar's curses was she was going to make the dead come up and eat the living. Mm-hmm. And that's, what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a, it's a goddess inspired, uh, zombie horde. <laughs> well, how about how about when there's no more room in hell, the dead will walk the earth. Yes, <laughs> for me. Right. Shout out to Bub, by the way. Ooh, Day of the dead. Yeah. Bub, right, Bub. Day of the dead. The um, the other thing about zombies that are, that are scary, if you think about them just tactically, a zombie army. This this I think was the most brought most to home in Game of Thrones, the White Walkers, mm-hmm. is that as your army shrinks, their army grows. Yes. So they're a juggernaut. Yeah. They. You right, just right. Imagine an ar- you f- you're fighting an army that w- that's getting bigger as the war goes on, right? Because they're just keep keep raising by up default, the dead. right? Yeah, by that, default. or even World War Z, where they they make the argument that that the zombie army, the the zombie horde that was building in that universe, they were 100 percent. Everything about them was was for killing you. They, yeah. They, I mean, in terms of like logistics, like they're if super you, soldiers. If you have yeah, super soldiers. If you if you have an army. You need to feed them. It's all about logistics. That's the real limiting thing. But with zombies, it's completely self-contained. They don't need anything, but just they're their own weapon. They don't. Need, they eat on the run, <laughs> right? They, and they don't even need to eat. Don't even need to yeah, eat. Well, if they, if they need to eat, they eat you. They eat the person that you're trying to kill. Right. Right. So it's yeah. sort of built into the whole process. They don't need to sleep. They have no fear. They're, they're, that's right. Yeah. They're just. That's Kinda why like. I think they're so menacing. Okay. All right. Next two are kind of related, uh, yes. and we get debated about whether we should make them one or two categories. I firmly believe there are two categories: AI and robots. Mm-hmm. Let's start with AI, AI. artificial intelligence. Um, so this begins with, in my opinion, the Colossus, mm-hmm. Colossus which was Roger. a classic yeah. science fiction movie from our youth. We watched this when we were young. Terrifying. It was terrifying, and Does it was it hold up. I don't, I it, it holds it. up. It holds up. It's I mean, the it's, last it's, lines, which it's kills you. dated. <laughs> it's dated. Yeah, can't because, help that. But it's appropriately dated, yeah. meaning it's still appropriate. It's, it takes place in it in the past. And it's but, not irrelevant. Yeah, but it's relevant. Oh, yeah. Completely Especially relevant. in our world Spe- Especially now. Thank oh, you. Oh, my God. Um, as soon as Lots uh, the chat right away, I was like, oh, this is a Colossus. GPT. Yeah. Skynet, Shodan from the yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, video game series, the um, the Reapers in uh, Mass Effect. Even uh, in Dune, one artificial intelligence almost destroys humanity yeah. and takes over the galaxy. In the Belarin Jihad. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think, though, right now, Skynet is more relevant as an enemy than ever before in human yeah. history because artificial intelligence is is starting at the very beginnings right now. And it's right just now. software. Like, there's no robot attached to it. Right. That's why it has to be its own category. Right, right. And, and, and it is now. I think now is the, the be, we will look back at now and mm. realize that this was the point where a more broader swath of, of, of people are realizing Hey, uh, this, this really is, could get this, out of control. Is, uh, you, you know, think we're going to look back on this, Bob? Shit's or? happening. Shit's <laughs> happening. I mean, maybe something we'll be around to look back may, on. Well, it? as pets, we will look back. <laughs> this and is a I, separate episode. I will declare now: I will be a pet for a, an artificial super intelligence. I will be happy to be a well cared for, <laughs> pampered pet. That's an important. I'll, I'll be Kyle Reese. Yes. All right, but but robots are the robots which don't have to be artificially intelligent. Yeah. They could be drones. They could be yeah. animal level intelligence. They could be pure automatons. But we're talking though. But, but what's menacing about them and, is they're metal people. Yeah, yes. I mean that they're very indestructible. So the Terminator is the iconic. It's iconic. Robot. There's no getting yeah. away. There's from, no getting from away. From yeah, that. it is. It begins and ends with the Terminator because it it really perfected, optimized everything that's menacing about the robot monster. Mm-hmm. It's relentlessness single-mindedness is difficulty to kill it keeps coming back i mean it right. now represents the whole idea of the monster that gets up after you thought it was dead mm-hmm. right, right that's the terminator and, but, and, started, and the prototype. but started with you'll bring your west i was just thank you i was yes. just gonna say that thank you <laughs> yes, that, because that and it was scary about that was started with that. it wasn't trying to kill humanity that you'll is there is the robot he's trying cowboy. to kill you he's trying to kill a specific <laughs> person and he was not going to stop yeah and that was very frightening right, right. Exactly. Now, all right. Now, I got to I got to say, 
if you want the apex of that that robot menace, it's got to be in my mind. I, I fell in love with this character recently, Brockel from Neil Asher's transformation series, where this this was an, an artificial swarm rogue ex criminal or criminal robot AI that was so menacing and so powerful. This is imagine he's made up of hundreds of worm like robots. So he can he can take any shape that he wants. And one day he's like, I want to get smarter. He decides to upgrade himself and he upgrades himself and he gets to the point where he was so much smarter that he's like, no, I'm doing this wrong. I got to upgrade myself in a better way. And he does that literally a dozen times. He got so smart, he realized that he could upgrade himself even better. And he ended up, he actually became a being that had to be very careful that he didn't contemplate the universe for all of eternity because he was so smart. He had to make mm -hmm. sure he didn't reach that point where he was like eternally navel gazing. And he, this guy was a devastating. He will take anyone on our top 10 list, except maybe Cthulhu, and he would either uh, either, for breakfast. either take them apart or, or genetically reprogram them. He could take on Everyone in our Bobby, list. You just I mean, made me amazing, amazing character. Loved yeah. him. It took a black hole to take him out. You just made me think of uh, perhaps the most terrifying example of AI is um, AM from uh, I Have No Mouth and I Must Scream. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. Oh, and somebody in the chat mentioned Hal. We have to oh, of Hal. course. Yeah. Of course. Hal, of course. I mean, the iconic. Like menacing AI with yeah. a pleasant voice. With a very, very <laughs> pleasant Very calming, voice, yes. relaxing. No, Dave, I have to kill you now. Like <laughs> that kind of voice. Yeah. It, it brings a new sort of aspect. Void of it. emotion. That's, oh, yeah, yes. the, the, I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Yes. Yes. And it's the emotionless. It's like yes. it's the single mindedness, whether it's the machine or the AI. Without emotion, there's no bargaining. There's no appealing like Terminator to Terminator the Borg. You're it's, not. Yeah, I used to work with a guy happen. named Dave, yeah. and every once in a while, he asked me to do something, and I'd go, "I'm sorry, I can't do that, Dave." <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I would think it's the funniest oh, thing. You yeah. know, like, Somebody just mentioned Glados. Thank you. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Glados. One of that is like and oh, Wheatley. perfect. Yeah, just yeah. magnificent. <laughs> yeah, nice. from the, from the Portal to from the Portal series. Portal yeah. to Portal to yeah, very yeah. very good. A petty. Um, as petty as a Greek goddess, just <laughs> 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 they're, they're great. They're great monstrous villains. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. All, All right. right. What's, what's next? What's, All right. More. Yeah. Yeah. I've got plenty more. <laughs> plenty more. Um, why don't we go to the biological category? So these are monsters that are menacing because of their unique biology mm -hmm. or because they threaten our biology. I think the two right. biggest Say ones. It. Speak it. The, I think the best monsters in this category, and that is The Thing the from thing. John Carpenter's The Thing, yep. and the when the original short story, which is actually more similar to that than the older movie, where it actually can become a monster, right? An actual physical, a bestial mm -hmm. monster. Or Whenever a, it wants. It, it can become a human, a human monster, but it also is a biological monster. It can infect you. It can get in your food. They could take you over from the inside without you even and there's knowing. There's no defense against that. Yeah, I mean, nothing. It's really it, it, there is a sense when you're watching that movie, and this is that we've talked about that movie itself. The scariest thing about it is that by the time you realize what's going on, it's too late. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you put yourself in that position, like if suddenly you were at that station and on the South Pole when they realized what's going on what would you do? It's too late. You're dead. Yeah. There's really nothing you can do. The best thing you could do is try to sacrifice yourself in a way that saves the rest of the world. But even right. then, that's a hard sell, man. To, to, to really be sure that the infection doesn't get out into the world would yeah. be, is a, is a tall order. Survival is not even on the, yeah. not even but, on the list. But if you find yourself in that position, you, what you can do, and I would recommend, is don't separate. Oh, don't yeah. ever separate. Don't. And do that blood test all the time. Yeah. Right. Well, the, um, the interesting thing about this monster is this is, I don't know how many monsters would f actually be able to do this, but this monster can kill the entire planet. Yeah. Oh yeah, it would turn the entire world yeah. Well, I'll into tell itself. you one that can, and one that did, one of the few movies where the monster wins, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Oh yeah. Right, yeah. it's the same thing where it's inexorable, yeah. it's in secret, it, you know, and in that one, you can't sleep. You can't sleep. That's you go to awful. sleep oh and you're God, dead. You're right. Yeah. The first one and actually the '78 remake was very good. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the first one actually. The first one ended with a little bit of hope. Hope. Yeah. The second one, arguably a sequel, because Kevin McCarthy is kind of playing the same character, <laughs> a little cameo. <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, the uh, the horror, the scene with uh, Donald Sutherland being Donald Sutherland um, oh with that God. awful scream. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh my yeah. God, so that was good. I, I haven't seen that. In that a, was a very in frightening a scene. And the effects it's, still hold up. I mean, in almost every scene, they, they most oh of them hold God, up. Oh, my God, man. Um, what's her name um, from um, – she was in that, and she's also an alien. Um, Veronica Cartwright. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah, she was yeah. good. She made it. She she's one of, the, one of the most traumatized um, actresses <laughs> in history. Oh, I know, right? You're oh right. Every God. time you see her, she's – alien <laughs> blood. and uh, feel yeah. her pain. Yeah. Could you yeah, put yourself in like a hermetic, hermetically sealed room? I mean, what was the mechanism of Well, you can't, Bob, because because their people are taken over. They'll just come get you. Yeah, the, well, po yeah. the pods grow. They replicate. I don't think they really explain exactly how they did it. But it, actually, in the second one, they sort of did. Donald Sutherland falls asleep in a chair – and a, a vine snakes up and wraps around him, and that almost is like the touch point where it's growing him out of the. That uh, makes the vine. sense, which means that you can you can isolate yourself enough where that doesn't happen. Yeah. But they would eventually come get you anyway, so you're kind of doomed. Um, yeah, scary stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Let's okay. See. All right. What do we got? So we're going to be turn a little bit more to fantasy now, um, which has a lot of its own category. So one category. We, we tried to not to make it too many different categories. So one is magical creatures mm -hmm. because there's just a lot of like dragons and manticore. Trolls, all trolls, that stuff. Trolls, goblins, orcs. There's a lot of just fantasy type humanoid or, or magical creatures. Uh, everything from Dungeons monsters. and Dragons. Yeah, everything. Basically the monster manual. Yeah. Greek Dungeons mythology. And yeah, mythology. Yeah, you know, the Cyclops, the Minotaur. Centaurs. Yeah, many, yeah. yeah exactly. Um, so yeah, what's that, a favorite? What's a favorite in that huge mishmash of stuff? Oh, I mean, how I can you pick? I love dragons. Dragons, I, mean, are, I know that's that's sort of the very, very ancient, common answer. ancient spellcasting red dragons. I mean, mm. it's hard to top that. I mean, they're magnificent and, and, creatures, you know, and they're sort not of thing. well represented in cinema. I would argue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I how, agree. how often um, do you actually does that actually happen? I mean, Dragon Slayer was Dragon a great movie. Dragon Slayer. Dragon Slayer. The, the Hobbit. Story. The Hobbit. You know, people rail against those the Hobbit series, but I I still love the scenes. With a, you know, with, with a dragon, with smog. I, and you mean in the remake? The, the, yeah. The re Peter Jackson's? Yes. That was, that was the worst part of the whole, I, the whole I, trilogy. It was a huge, But they destroyed that yeah, dragon. Sure. I still like seeing it. I still like seeing because it, because it's so underrepresented. The it's, dragons in Game of, of Thrones them. are awesome. Yeah, they're cool. Don't, they're good. They're good. Dragon they're Slayer's they're a great not, call, though. That, the dragon Slayer's And those effects yes, were pretty cool favorite. for the time. That was yeah. like a brand and new technique. They used, they didn't use stop motion for the dragon. I remember they used go motion, which mm -hmm. is like kind of the opposite yeah. of stop motion, which is an interesting te technique that didn't really, doesn't, doesn't really be used anymore. It was, it gets rid of the, it, it induces the motion blur so yeah. it doesn't look like it's stop motion. Okay. All right. What else? So we have also in the fantasy realm supernatural creatures, mm -hmm. um, things like a vampire. Like, what is a vampire? It's not really bestial. It's not really it's human. Not, not human. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's humanoid, of, but it's 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 more it's diff too different to can throw it in the human category. It's kind of an infection. It's a supernatural. How you look at yeah, it? Yeah, it could right? be an infection, but it's it could be he's undead, although not a zombie. But I think there we need a supernatural category to Agreed. include things yeah. like like vampires. Vampires, you know, can be very menacing. I think they, um, you know, the. Uh, traditionally, like for me, vampires are one of the best monsters because they they combine so many things. They're uh, they're just pure evil. Mm -hmm. They're intelligent. The intelligence they're is the scary part. They're resourceful. They're yeah. long lived. Yeah, and they have spent their time perfecting <clears throat> their craft. They're they're merciless predators. You are food to them. Yeah. Yeah. So a really classic evil vampire. That's definitely one of the, I mean, you think about it, who would you want to be standing across from? I would rather face off against a werewolf than a vampire any day. Um, <laughs> you're you're the, toast either way. Uh, well, pretty much. But I mean, you, at least for like a, a werewolf, you might be able to climb into something and hide. I don't know. Vampire, forget about it. If he, if he wants to eat you, he's going to eat you. And see, there's a line in the original Dracula, the original yeah. novel of Bram Stoker, where Dracula himself says, when he's being confronted, he says that, um, you know, my plans stretch over centuries and time is on my side. Yes. Mm -hmm. So like you're, you're, he's, he's, been, you're a, you're a yeah, bug. You're a, you're a blip in his larger plan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. They yeah. couldn't care less about your <laughs> pathetic short yeah. little you're a life. You're, you're, yeah. Like we think of ants, except they're delicious. But vampires yeah. are so provocative that they can be, they can be the protagonist. That's in the, the thing. Stories. I understand that. Although I really don't like this trend of making like friendly vampires. Oh, it's fine. Come on. Uh, oh, wait. You know, you know, Sparkly friendly Lestat? vampires. 
I mean, the stand-up yeah, comedian. Yeah, yeah, I know oh, so he's not kind of, friendly. No, but you you love him. You well, you that wanna... but he's an anti-hero. Right. But I'm talking about the sparkly vampires. Yeah, that's uh, all. That's just a diluted. That they're yeah. not. They're not really vampires. Yeah. A couple of people mentioned Near Dark, which is an underrated yes. movie. Those are frightening vampires. Yeah, they are. The first they time I ever were... saw vampires explode into fire. They. Um, yeah. I recommend that movie. I haven't seen yep. it in years, and I was. I almost saw it last night, but I didn't. Well but I'm going to see it. Bill Paxton as a vampire. Need I say more? Creepy. <laughs> Need as I hell. say more? And yeah. Lance Hendrickson. Come Lance on. Hendrickson. Well, Lance Hendrickson is terrifying in anything he does, even if he was just you know yeah, bringing a, your, a you know, your Uber Eats. But they're um, underrated. But to be <laughs> fair though, the movie. the the cheesy aspect of vampires. I mean, it goes it goes. Is it predate the '80s? I know it was in the '80s, but there's been cheesy vampires for a very long. Oh, time. Oh yeah, you can go back to Christopher Lee um, vampire mm-hmm. movies, and, yeah, and Bella Lugosi. And, but I uh, loved Frank Langella as a vampire. I actually liked him as a vampire as well. Yep. Um, he, I he had saw the it, thing with his eyes. That, yeah, yeah, I saw that within a year, and it totally holds up. I mean, you could you arguably I dislike mirrors. You can say they are it, the playthings of man's <laughs> vanity. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, the voice it's a little awesome. slow because it's. I mean, it was made yeah. in '79, so it's a little slow, but it is still. Still, the cinematography, the acting, everything, the costuming yeah. is off the hook, highly recommended, holds up, Frank rocks. And one little, uh, an inversion of this uh, with the vampire trope, um, the book, not the film, the book, I Am Legend, mm-hmm. oh. when the vampires, there was a vampire plague taking yeah. over the world, but um, in the end, there was one human who's like fighting yes. against them, yes. it does this brilliant narrative shift where he's now the monster who's hunting them because they've moved on and created their own society. Yeah. And he's the creature in the middle of the night who shows, or rather middle of the day, shows up and is, you know, cutting their heads off and putting them on stakes and he's so forth. He's the monster. He's the monster. Right. Of course right. he is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. Read, read the room, room, man. Read the room. Read your, day, your time is over. <laughs> read the room. All right. There's also <laughs> godlike monsters. Um, Things, you know, creatures that are so powerful, so intelligent that Skip they really up. are. Yeah, they're, they're in the godlike category. Like Q. Like Q. Your only chance Trek. with them is either to escape their notice or, or appease them or, or somehow or appease mm-hmm. them or we have something like that. Be or, interesting to be, it. Yeah. Be a Picard. But you can't fight against them. You have no, no. chance against no. them. They literally have godlike power against you. There was an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation where there's a creature called a Dao. The episode yes. was called Sur- The Survivors. And he just thought, he got so angry at a specific species, he wiped them out everywhere they were in the universe. Yes. Just with, because with of a moment, but the thought. With a thought. And that's, that's a terrifying thing. And if Picard finally says, you know, he's like, we don't have any laws to judge you. We we have no, nothing fits, what you did is way outside of our yeah. abilities. We just think that you should be left alone. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or potentially, I would make allies with them. Or you would ally. <laughs> but that's cute. Like, you could do that, right? I mean... Oh, what am I forgetting? Oh, Infernal. This is now. This is the one that yeah. I think scares me the most. Infernal. Infernal can. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like my favorite example of of an infernal creature uh, is a possessed person from Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. Right. So they're not really that powerful, um, but they are creepy beyond anything. Yeah. You know, it, like Bob was saying before when we were talking about this. If you if you actually interacted with a, a, a possessed person from Evil Dead. It it would change your perspective. Mm-hmm. It would it would change you. It would be you it would be a life changing event. Shit. Yeah, like, you'd lose like, it. Like, like like never before. Yeah. I, I so can't I, imagine the fear of seeing somebody I loved become something like that. Is it's really would you consider terrifying. the grudge to be infernal? Like oh yeah, yeah. Because and yeah. what's freaky about that? You don't even have to do anything wrong. You just walk into the wrong house one day. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then it's after you forever. Yeah. So in, infernals definitely bring a lot to the table as as monsters. So they're powerful. Mm-hmm. They're evil. Like they're just inherently evil. They are the embodiment, you know, metaphysically of evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they they not only want to kill you, they want to do it in a very sadistic way. Yes, yeah, sadistic, disgusting, perverse way. They're super intelligent. Mm-hmm. Again, they yeah. have a perspective that spans, you know, you know, thousands of years. You know, not. To you, to them, again, you're just as a little uh, a blip Emote. for them to use to corrupt. You know, they want Why to corrupt have you, you awakened us from our ancient, ancient slumber? <laughs> so, Caldarian demons. Okay. Uh, now, I would argue the number one, the obvious number one example of this is the devil, right? Yeah, I mean, it's obvious. Yeah. And, and think of the devil is everywhere. It's, <laughs> it's referenced in so many different things yeah. that it, to me, he's, he's the apex of, of that, of that whole inferno. Well, Azatoth, right? I mean, in Lovecraft, much. Azatoth wakes up and reality ends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, he's rough, man. Yeah. He, but that, that I don't up. know. Would you, would that be infernal though? 
Inferno. I think it's Lovecraftian. It's Lovecraftian, Lovecraftian. and it's also godlike. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah he's Pin- Pinhead from Hellraiser Cenobite. kills you in horrible ways and yes. thrives on yeah, pain. Yeah, he's infernal. And, yeah, mm. yeah. One of my favorite categories, though. I mean, I, I would definitely, it, if I were to encounter a lot of these monsters on this list, I think Infernal would be the one that scares me the most. Yeah. If you want to see the, if you want to see the most, in my opinion, the best demons. The uh, the mo- powerful demons, scary demons, creative demons, beautiful demons. Watch Castlevania. Castlevania was great on Netflix. The smartly animation written, was wonderful. Really? Smartly okay. acted. The the animation was very good. And the demons. I've never seen such a, a plethora of demons that were beautiful and creative and scary and powerful. Mm-hmm. All right, Watch I'll check it. Out. Is there Watch wall it. meat? Huh? And can you whip a wall and get like a pork chop out of it? But then it's not being valid. Yeah, but you I, love that I game. Don't know what you I love that. the Castlevania <laughs> games. Yeah. I love the Castlevania games. Uh, two more categories. One okay. is non-corporeal. Yeah, yeah so monsters. ghosts, spirits, poltergeist, poltergeist. terrifying. Oh my god! So they're terrifying, obviously, because there's what can, what you, can do? you do? What yeah, can you, do? you can't physically attack them. Although usually they have a weakness, because otherwise yeah. there's no story, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They have yeah. to. You have to be able to do something. Oh, you put a line of salt, and they can't cross it. Something <laughs> that you could do. There's actually a there's a, a new TV show about um, where ghosts appear mm-hmm. and. Uh, like 50 years ago, and it turns out that if a ghost touches you, you die. That's powerful, man. That's powerful. Yeah. The ghost touch is death, and they're trying not to figure out where do they come from? Why are they suddenly killing everybody? How do we protect ourselves from them? Uh, so I highly recommend that other name. It's like it's a it's a British show, and it's uh, uh, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the show, but anyway, it'd probably be easy to find. But uh, but yeah, so the, the non corporeal that could also be an energy being, like a pure energy being. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be spiritual. The galactic right? being from the outer limits yeah. um, was probably one of the first examples I remember. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. it was came from another dimension, and it, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. And then the final category, is. which is actually my favorite, <laughs> and my favorite monster is in this category: miscellaneous. Miscellaneous. <laughs> so <laughs> your favorite the, category, <laughs> right? <laughs> Well, because this is basically things that are so weird and effed up, we couldn't think of another category to put them in. Like, give examples. They're very, so, yeah. so, iconically, the blob. Yeah, the right? blob doesn't fit in anything. And the blob is a great monster. It's it's a slow monster, but again, mm-hmm. it's this, like, it's an inexorable, and it's hard to defend against because it could literally ooze under, under doorways under doors, and yeah. through window jams or whatever. It shoot and it. it just slowly dissolves you and eats you. Hide in a freezer. And, and, and it gets bigger. As and it, it goes, gets bigger yeah. as it eats. Uh, so if you haven't seen the remake, it was remade in the 80s. 80s. It was very good. And yeah. it was actually really good. It was freaky. The effects My were, memory is telling me yeah. it was very good. The, the effects were the effects made that. Oh, yeah. Oh, without yeah. a doubt. Do um, we have another example of uh, I, yes. uh, In the Hounds of Tendalos, um, I think Frank Belknap Long wrote it. Um, it was a Lovecraftian style story where these creatures, entities would come out of angles. Mm. Um, to come after you, mm-hmm. um, so you this you know you have to live like in a round room, and uh, they could actually you know create an earthquake and create an angle and come <sighs> after you. You're never going to get away. You're from done. Them. Yeah. And what about the monsters from the id in Forbidden Planet? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. they're yeah, kind that's of non corporeal, but they're also part of you. I no, also I mean, my I think my favorite monster is. The Weeping Angels from the Ah, yeah. yeah, that's great. So good. Yeah. I've got to watch yeah. that again, again. They're just sort of they don't so fit. Good. They're in a category all of their own. They're quantum monsters. They, <laughs> yeah. right? It's terrible. So they only they, the thing is they they don't exist when you look at them, right? So when you look at them, they're, they're just statues. statues. But when you're not looking at them, then they could move and they move incredibly fast, and. Uh, so you the, the you can't blink right you, you you can't not look at them for even a second otherwise like and they're very very scary and, and they're used to good effect so like one might be across the room from you and you blink and then it's right in your face you know yeah it's really really scary and then they kill you yes by sending you into the past and then feeding off your entropy as you age to the present. That's, that's pretty. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> unique. That's interesting. That's super creative. Yeah, very very and... creative. Love them. Great monsters. Very hard to defend against. So if yeah. we if we missed a category by any chance, <sighs> or if we didn't do something, that if we if you felt like we wronged you in some way, <laughs> then to email <laughs> us and tell us, you know, how we can improve the list. I mean, again, this is our version of this. There is no one it's, way yeah. to categorize monsters. Lockwood um, and Company was the show I was talking about. Somebody yes. put it in the chat. Thank you so much. But it, it was an incredible amount of fun 
trying to come up with this list and, yeah. and see if we can rationalize something that is hyper irrational. Mm, right? Yeah. And we have an innate fear of monsters. Yeah. Right. And when we want, we're fascinated by them because that's how we deal with our fear. Yeah. Again, it's that like if it's, it, uh, if it bends, it's funny. If it breaks, it isn't funny. Right. So near death <laughs> is fun, but as long as, it, as long as you don't actually die or get hurt or get harmed. I, so I would dare say to watch monsters. There is always room for one more good monster movie, mm -hmm. right? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, right. Like, I don't think, I don't think creative should, enough. Yeah. As a genre, monster oh, movies, man. you can't, it's not like, cause I, I've gotten kind of played out by zombies. I love zombies, yeah. but there's been so much zombie going on. But, but there's, but then like the last of us came out with the click zombies and the fungal zombies. I'm right. like, all right, I could do another series. Of that was a unique like, spin on it. It's a very good show. Yeah. But I will say show. though, I mean, you, because you brought it up, <laughs> That really is a show about people. I mean, of course. the zombies are not showcased that much. Every, every is, good show would be ultimately. It should be, of course, yeah, right? of course. That's why it's a good show, though. It's not like you're right. just looking at mm. the glorification of zombies, which. Yeah. Th this doesn't... last episode did not have one zombie in it. Yeah. Not one. Doesn't need it. Right. Doesn't need it. But they better have it next time. It's the world building. See? The yeah. world yeah, building the is world what building. Made, makes that show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah every Absolutely. mythology has uh, has monsters in it. The first stories that we know about have are mm -hmm. about monsters and Baba it's... and the Cedar Forest. So we 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 are fascinated by monsters. Yeah, I mean we they're a part of humanity. They're, they yeah. they go with us. They're they're the representative of, of everything that we fear as sentient beings. How many children's stories have monsters in them? Yeah, right? we Mo love, we like to scare children with monsters. A lot of a lot of Disney's stories started mm -hmm. off as essentially scary yeah. stories. You know, that involve kids. You know, yeah. as we engage in auto evolution in the generations to come. I hope we never, you know, breed that out of ourselves where, where we're not fascinated <laughs> or even obsessed a little bit with monsters because it, to me, that would be like, that would be a loss for humanity. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's also about storytelling. And that's also something that's intimately tw in tw in, you know, intertwined with, yeah. with what we are and who we are. So if you enjoy this episode, please do drop by our website. You can go to www. We don't even say that anymore. Yeah, we no, don't say that www. anymore. We don't it's say it. <laughs> go to alpha quadrant and the number six.com where you can see past episodes of, that we have done. We also turn this show into a podcast. And if you really like this show, I know there's a couple of you out there, become a patron, help support the show and help keep us going. And, uh, and guys, I gotta tell you, you're all monstrous to me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming. Stay so monstrous. <laughs> See you next time, guys.